What's up, people? VanTX89 here. And, well, I've received some requests about how do you record your Let's Plays. Well, I'll show you. My capture setup. It's fairly simple. Uh, I have a VHS DVD player, a digital video camera, of course, any uh, game console, and, of course, an HDTV. Now that necessarily has to be a certain way, but we're going for the gear overview now. Um, this is pretty much everything that you pretty much need. Um, yeah, the laptop included. Um, you do need a computer in order to add all of this, naturally. But basically, yeah, this is a combo player. They don't make these anymore, as far as I know. Um, it plays uh, VHS cassettes, tapes. And, um, and DVDs and CDs. So let's take a look at the back of this and you can see your component cables, your coaxial cables, uh, well, uh, ports I should say. Yeah, and then over on the far left side are your standard composite cables, well, composite ports, as well as the antenna in and out. So um, this is pretty much how I do it. I actually use a digital video camera and a VCR in order to actually record my Let's Plays. So basically I want to actually cover um, you know, pretty much uh, the basics as to how to do it rather than anything specific but um, as you can see here I have a, a video record button, a still picture button, it, it's a multimedia camera. You can also listen to MP3s and record audio files on it. It connects via USB and also has 8-inch uh, uh, ports. So you can actually connect uh, for input or connect so the camera serves as an output for something. And of course it comes with this um, RCA to 8-inch cable. Most Y cables that you find are probably two audio channels or maybe one audio and one video channel um, but anyway yeah this eighth inch is headphones standard headphones that go into anything like an mp3 player an ipod an iphone or whatever in terms of establishing connection um, basically um, well we're going to go and connect the output first. This isn't necessarily the order that I always plug them up in, but it's convenient for me. So basically, what we're going to be doing is getting signal from the PlayStation into the VCR, which will be like um, a router or a hub where it'll send the signal out through what I'm plugging in right now into the camera. And the camera will actually record it as digital video. And then I should put that digital video into my laptop and use a converter program. Uh, I, I use any video converter um, in order to switch from .asf, which is what my videos come out as. And then I convert that. But I'll talk about that after a while. Right now... As you can see here, I actually am using a, um, a kind of Y cable. Um, my input is limited. I only have one audio channel. Now, I don't know whether or not you do get a single audio channel out of that. Um, plugging it up the, uh, without the split or the, uh, the union. But I decided to plug it in uh, that way just in case. I do get stereo audio doing this. Whatever's on in the left, it's on the left. Whatever's on the right, it's on the right. So um, that's how I hook up my PlayStation to my VCR. Um, yeah, the same inputs are actually also on the front. So it has a line one and line two. I believe that's line one that I plugged into. So now to connect the VCR to the television. Unfortunately, my TV doesn't work right now. I assume it's because the heat probably fried the circuits. Um, 
but anyway, yeah. So as you can see, I've got like S video, HDMI, composite. Um, yeah, but we're going around the back to where there's all the other crazy connections back here. Um, and basically, it's the same kind of uh, connector, the RF connector that you have on the back of a VCR or any standard television set. So you use this cable to hook into it. So, um, yeah, if my TV was working, I'd actually show you the full setup, but, uh, but this is basically an external thing, so you can actually watch what it is that you're playing. So, basically, you can play the game, you know, on the TV and know that it's actually going in. So, like I said, the input is pretty much your source, whatever game that you're going to be playing. Your output is going to be your capture device, whatever that may be. So you just plug up the TV into the output channel because if you plug it up to the end, you won't get any signal. You won't actually be able to see what you're doing. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually stacking my PlayStation on top of my VCR. Unfortunately, both of those things get hot. And if you only leave like the VCR on but uh, have the PlayStation off or on standby like you see there, it will actually still, there's a little something called transference that will actually heat it up. And that's a good way to kill your system. So use a buffer. I sometimes use like a catalog or a phone book or something. And um, if you'll excuse my wonky handling right now, I'm recording this using my iPhone 4 and uh, I'm right handed and my iPhone is in my right hand so I'm kinda of messing around with my left hand trying to work this out huh. so now um, I basically have to go onto the playback channel um, well the playback menu and then there's actually a little plate that goes that covers that but um, it kind of uh, the glue melted so I had to like just kind of store it. So basically, we're running the output of the VCR into the input channel of the camera. And well, that is actually how you do it. That's how I uh, pretty much uh, have my setup. So now I'll just power on the VCR. As you can see, this is my VCR's uh, display right now. And I gotta turn on my PlayStation so that I can actually see signal and I can actually find what channel I'm supposed to be on. And I plugged in the line one, so there's line one on the camera screen. You could also see it on the TV screen if my TV worked. It seems kind of complicated, but it's not really complicated. As you can see, there's the PlayStation 2 logo. And we're pretty much good. That's how I actually record the footage. Next, I'm actually going to be showing you how I record commentary. So, I have two ways of doing that. The um, method that I'm using right now to basically record uh, over the video um, is using the microphone built into my MacBook Pro but um, what I used to do and I'm probably going to go back to doing that is I actually use an MXL 990 condenser microphone um, no you do not have to buy this because I mean it's it's a $100 microphone but any kind of USB mic is totally fine you can also use uh, any other kind of program like Windows Movie Maker, iMovie Audacity, GarageBand, whatever, uh, in order to record your um, your commentary. But um, considering uh, I'm an audio student, well, I was an audio student, now I'm an engineer. Um, well, I decided to buy my own rig so I could practice. Um, I believe it cost me about 300, 300 plus, but that's not the point. So I'm going to show you how I actually sell that up. So now I actually have to, um, 
apply the mount to the mic stand and well no, that doesn't really take very long so and I'm trying to stand clear and not create a shadow so you can actually see that it's firmly in place it won't actually go anywhere hey you wanted to see how I do this well you wanted to know how I do this and well I'm actually showing you how I record and how I get everything together now there's um, there's a washer there um, a little plate that you can actually unscrew in order to mount the microphone onto a mic stand and well you know you do need that uh, that mount right there that I put in on the stand first otherwise um, you're going to have one big problem and microphones like that are not easy or cheap to repair well they might be easy to repair but they are certainly not cheap especially a large diaphragm condenser microphone like that so now that's the microphone part done uh, and now here we are with my audio interface I pretty much bought an Avid Pro Tools um, rig and so all of that like well there's a, a lot more to it that actually came with it but basically here's what we're doing on the left there's channel one on uh, in the middle channel two right next to that on the right is the headphone or um, output uh, volume on the far right of that is the actual volume um, well your monitor volume now there's your monitor output your lines which are the uh, inputs how you record and it's powered by USB and it also has an XLR port USB I shouldn't have to tell you you use that to connect the interface to your computer so let's actually go to the uh, key component here the XLR cable this is standard for any kind of uh, microphone input output setup um, fortunately I have a rather simple setup I don't have to hook up like all sorts of compressors and EQs and and all that so basically it's a three pin cable and um, yeah I'm not really going to go into detail about that this isn't really an audio lesson this is more of just how in the world do you do what you do but I have actually recorded like this for a game in a while uh, not since GarageBand messed me up so as you can see on the bottom of the MXL 990 there are three pins so you actually connect the female connector you line it up make sure that it matches that pattern plug it in there it is it's set and now you take the male end and you match it to the pattern of the XLR port on the interface so that's going to be over there on the far right and once I do that, and of course plug it in, uh, I'd plug it in first, but you know, um, for the sake of just showing you what it is I'm doing. Now, because I'm using a condenser microphone, you need phantom power or 48 volts in order to allow the microphone to pick up signal. So once I engage the phantom power, then I can actually turn the input volume up and that will actually allow me to hear myself in the microphone well through the microphone that 48 volt light will light up once you hit the phantom power switch now I usually also plug in some headphones using uh, an eighth inch to quarter inch adapter so I can actually hear um, your that big volume knob your main uh, volume is not really determined when you have that going all right, so now here we are covering um, how I actually record. Now, using the inbox, I'm allowed to use Pro Tools. Um, you can check my Shadow Dragon X89 channel. 
in order to see some of my Pro Tools videos. Basically, I will also be showing you how to record a voiceover, and it's pretty much the exact same thing that I just described. Um, so, Pro Tools, um, like the industry standard uh, um, Pro Audio Suite uh, for you know recording, mixing, editing. You can use it for voiceover work, music, um, you know, sound effect, uh, sound effects design, and uh, things like that. Um, this isn't an actual commentary set, but um, I feel that it still gets the point across. Now, as for the other method that I use, if you don't actually have Pro Tools and this and that, because it will actually cost you. Um, Pro Tools 10 now, I believe, is like, what, $400, $500? Um, so, yeah, if you're not into professional audio, <laughs> um, I'm... I only really have the ability to show off what my Mac can do right now, but um, you can use GarageBand or Audacity or um, NCH's WavePad uh, program, which is um, it's pretty good. I mean, it's kind of limited, and I actually get to use it for an extended period of time um, on Windows if I downgrade, but if I try and run it on Mac, I end up uh, getting locked out after 14 days or 30 um, but that's not the point basically you can actually record your commentary here and then you can export it or you know um, actually import the video file too in GarageBand and actually record your commentary and that's what that orange line is the audio from the video as well and that's how you can like render a whole video but my actual current setup right now for um, like rendering is pretty much iMovie. iMovie is like my default go-to thing right now. So yeah, it's kind of a picture-in-picture -picture thing for me right now. Um, but basically, here is um, like part four of uh, the prologue of Paper Mario. And basically, um, the purple line is my commentary. And as you can see, the video is broken up into blocks. All of those are edits, actually. And yeah, it's very, very chunky. And uh, I don't know, but as you can see in the display, everything moves fairly smoothly. So yeah, this is pretty much my process. I actually have additional edits. And if I feel the need to add uh, like subtitles or titles or whatever, or any kind of like overlap, then I'll do that. So it's not too bad. So here's pretty much the uh, project window. And in order to, well, in order for me to finish a video or render it, I just highlight export movie, click that. Although there is a finalization option, but I don't really often use that because it takes a lot of time. It still works though. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I record my Let's Plays. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I will be sure to answer. I hope you enjoyed this video, and well, I hope that you stay tuned for the next behind-the-scenes video. I'll see you guys then.